Today I'm going to share with you my secret weapon to instantly and easily fix extremely challenging skin tones in Photoshop. We have made several videos on fixing skin tones where we use curves, camera raw and whatnot. However, there are situations when things get very complicated or no matter how much you move the curves or push the sliders, nothing seems to work. This is for those situations and I hope you enjoy this so without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical and mysterious world of Photoshop and if you wish to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you know what to do, check the links in the description. The first thing we need to do is to press Ctrl or Command j and make a copy of the background lab let's go to filter convert for smart filters your first line of defense should be trying camera raw and see how that works out to be hit ok and go to filter and then camera raw filter you can also do this inside of lightroom or directly when you bring in raw in photoshop camera raw automatically shows up inside of that you can try with color and try with white balance maybe select the eyedropper and maybe click somewhere inside of the eyes and see if that fixes it. It fixes it to some extent. You can also try clicking on some other areas, but I believe that clicking inside of the eyes in the eye whites does a better job. And from here, you can scroll down, come to color mixer and come to the mixer section. Inside of this, use this icon right here and play with hue, saturation and luminance. Let's start with hue and I'm gonna click and drag it to the right or left to see which one works better. Similarly, I'm going to do it for the dark areas, right or left, and nothing seems to work right now. Let's try saturation. Let's click here. Let's activate it. We want less saturation here, maybe more saturation there. You can also try luminance, but this is just making it complicated. You can also go to point color. That does a better targeting. With the help of the eyedropper, let's target this color first. And you can play with the range to see which areas are being targeted. If you activate this, you'll see the targeted areas in color. You can increase or decrease the range. So I'm going to increase it this much, about 80%, and then deactivate it to see all the colors, and then play with hue to make it better. So I'm going to make it more of this color, maybe less saturation and play with the luminance. Similarly, with the same eyedropper, let's sample the dark areas, fine. See what range of colors are being targeted. This is fantastic. And you can play with this as well. So maybe I'm gonna decrease the saturation a bit more and play with the luminance. There we go, it does a pretty good job by the way. So that is your first line of defense because it doesn't bring in or recolor additional things, but it did a pretty good job. And maybe we can work with this. Now, while we are here, why not just also go to the light section and play with the whites and maybe the exposure to make it even better. That's pretty darn good. I'm gonna increase the shadows a bit and play with the highlights to make it more evened out. And this just kind of works a little bit in my opinion. There you go. Something like that would work for this one. And you can go back to color and modify this to your liking. Temperature, I'm going to make it slightly warmer, like so. This works and this gives a pretty good result. Hit OK once you're satisfied. So this was our camera raw result. Again, you can make it better, take your time with it. But I wanted to share with you, do we have a better option or an easier option for these extreme situations? By the way, if you wanted to fix this area, simply create a brand new layer, take the brush, Sample the good color areas by holding the Alt key or the Option key. Click to take a sample and change the blend mode of this layer from normal to color. So it just changes the color. You want to make sure you have the soft round brush selected. Let's make the brush slightly smaller and I'm just going to paint right there. And it kind of fixes that. It's not as good. We can work with curves to kind of work with that, but this is the result mostly of what we get. So this was our camera raw technique. It retains the original colors, but is it as good or easy as our secret weapon? Let's test it. So here on the background layer, I'm gonna right click and choose duplicate layer, and we're gonna create a new document. This time, let's try curves. Hit okay. All right, so with this new document, let's create a curves adjustment layer instead. And if you just want to change the colors, you can try changing the blend mode from normal to color. This way, whatever you do just changes the colors. If you feel the highlights are more green, go to the green channel with the help of the hand right here, click and drag it down. If you feel the shadows are more some color, you can click and drag it up or down. But this just is making it very complicated. I'm going to increase the blue here, also increase or decrease the blue, but this is just too complicated to handle. If you feel there's a lot of red, you can take it down. But I have to say it's not that bad. Back in the greens, I'm going to take it down further, something like that. And you can also try with the middle eyedropper. Click on the middle of the eye to see how well it does. So here's the before, here's the after, but still not as good. 
So let's just get to her secret weapon. So with the background layer selected again, I'm gonna make another duplicate by choosing duplicate layer. Document, new document, and this time it is our secret weapon. Hit OK, and here we have a new document. With the background layer selected right here, press Ctrl or Command J to make a duplicate. We can apply a filter here, but before we do apply anything, go to filter, convert for smart filter so that whatever we apply, we can change the values later. Now, sometimes the colors are so extreme, it just makes sense to try recoloring it and see how that performs. So let's go to filter and then neural filters. I'm quite upset that Adobe is not working to make this better or putting some more updates in neural filters, but these were just genius creations. In the colorize section, this is made for black and white, but it can be applied to this one as well. And instantly, oh my gosh, this is just such a wonderful recolor. And you can make some changes here. You can introduce some colors here, but I'm not going to do that right now because that makes it more complicated. This is fine. You don't have to output as a new color layer because that's also not that very good. Just make sure that the output is set to smart filter. Hit OK. And it's already a smart object, so you can always get back to it by double clicking on it. And there you have it. This is pretty good. Although there are a few hiccups here and there. For example, the lip color is getting out a bit and the image is a little bit blurred. That's a separate thing. We're going to take care of that later. But for right now, let's focus on the color. For it, simply create a brand new layer. Take the brush. You know what to do. Hold the Alt key or the Option key. Sample the good color. If it's not sampling, you want to make sure you select the eyedropper tool and change sample to all layers. 5x5 five five or 3x3 three three is fine. Select the brush, hold the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample and paint on the areas to fix it. Of course, do not forget to change the blend mode from normal to color. So it only changes the color. Take a sample from here and paint. Take a sample from here and paint. Like that. It's not a big deal. There are just a few areas that we need to fix. Similarly here, the lip color is leaking a bit. Similarly there as well. Now, once you're done, see if there are any other areas where you need fixing. Somewhere around the edges of the eye, here and there, around the edges of the body. But this is perfectly fine. If you feel that this area is a bit too saturated, I'm going to take a sample from here and paint right there. Just a bit. There you go. And this looks pretty good. On top of that, to make it even better, you can create a curves adjustment layer by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and choosing curves. And then take the rightmost slider to the left like so. And instantly, this gets so darn much better. Oh my gosh. Now there are some areas that do need some fixing. For example, the dark areas are a bit too oversaturated. So we can easily take care of that inside of camera. In fact, let me just show you. If you press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E, this creates a merged layer of everything you see on the canvas right now. Now let's go to filter, convert for smart filters, hit OK. Go to filter and then camera raw filter. Inside of that, if you feel that dark areas are too saturated, you can come down in the color mixer, go to point color with the eyedropper, just sample those dark areas. That's it. And then you can decrease their saturation. See, it just goes away and change the hue and see how that goes for you. And you can also change the luminance. And you can play with the range to see only those areas are being targeted. Just make the range very, very narrow, like so. Deactivate that and it instantly fixes it. So here's the before. See all those dark areas not looking nice. Here's the after. There's a nice fix. Hit OK. You can also mask it. So if you feel that you needed to apply it only in some areas like these areas, you can do it. But overall, this is looking pretty darn good. Oh my gosh, I'm in love with it. So I'm going to decrease the opacity, 100 is too much. So maybe let's set it to about 60 for effect. On top of that, if you want to remove the blurriness of the face, that was a photography thing. You can create another merge layer at the top by pressing Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E with the topmost layer selected. Go to filter, convert for smart filters. And for this, for blurred areas, for upscaling, Topaz Photo AI does an incredible job. Again, this is an optional step. And if you want to try Topaz Photo AI, I'll leave a link to the trial version in the description. It's one of my top recommended plugins for Photoshop. Let's go to filter, Topaz Labs, Topaz Photo AI. It does everything from sharpening to upscaling to denoising to recovering faces. It is just limitless. So on the left hand side, you have the before. On the right hand side, you have the after. Right now, no settings are applied. You can sharpen the subject. Just click on it and it does everything automatically. But it didn't do a pretty good job. So I'm going to go to lens blur right here. And there you go. It is improved. So I'm going to zoom out a bit. And here's the before. 
here is the after. Let me zoom in a bit to share with you the difference. Here's the before, here's the after. You can increase the strength to your liking. It's even more sharper. Once you're satisfied, just click on export to Adobe Photoshop and there you go, it's overall sharper. But we didn't want the sharpness on the hair areas. It looks a bit weird there, only on the face. So with that layer selected, hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the mask button. You get a black mask, which means it's hidden everywhere. Select the brush with white as the foreground color. Just paint over the areas where you need to see it, like the face and maybe a little bit right there and it's done. It's fantastic. Remember, black conceals, white reveals. In simpler terms, black hides, white shows. Now let us compare all of these techniques and see how they stand up. So this one was just with a quick camera or filter. Maybe if we gave it more time, we would have a better result, but still, it's not as good. Then we tried curves and honestly, I didn't try it enough because it was getting a bit complicated and I wanted to give you a simpler solution. And here is our secret weapon. So much more better. Here is just the camera raw, just the curves, a little bit of trial and here is our secret weapon. Keep in mind we also used camera raw, a bit of curves and also a little bit of correction. We combined everything to give it the look that we have. So the colorized filter may not be perfect but it usually gives you a fantastic starting point to begin with. Here is the before and here is the after. As we come close to the end of 2024, I wish you a fantastic and incredible start to New Year 2025. I really hope that 2025 turns out to be your best year yet, with even greater years to come. With full of creativity, tons of happiness and amazing surprises, I know that you will make this year as incredible as you are. To celebrate this new year, we are giving a very special discount on Piximperfect Pro for a very limited time, so definitely check out Piximperfect.com if you want to master Photoshop from start to finish and beyond. And start this new year with a creative spark. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.